Okay, so as you may recall in my uh, Blink demo board video, I had mentioned how uh, handy these connectors are to have for programming the 18F4550 when it's in a breadboard, and how some of the alternatives, such as your typical uh, bent header or straight header, can work, but they're really not the greatest. So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make these connectors, but first let's take a look at why they're so advantageous. So here we have our Blink demo board uh, circuit on a breadboard and then we have a picket 2 and some of our programming uh, options as far as connectors so remember the programming pins on the 18F4550 for data and clock are in this section here towards the top right of the pin so that's where we're going to need to connect to so we want to take our picket 2 and then if we consider some of our traditional options first we could take our bent header now there are possible ways to stick this into the board for example you could put it there and then try to sort of work the pick kit 2 into the end but it doesn't really want to fit because the, the fits too close between the header and the edge of the board. Other options are we could turn the header this way. Now if you notice looking at the header the pins are long on one side and short on the other. It's also the same for the straight header. Short on one side, long on the other. So if we use the long pins to get into the breadboard more cleanly so we'll insert it in that orientation. Then the problem is the short pins going into the pick kit too just barely stick in there. So that's sort of workable, but if you jiggle the pick kit too just a little bit, it's either going to fall out of the breadboard or the pick kit too will disconnect from the connector. Similarly, we could do the same thing here, but we still have the same problem. If we put the long end of the pins into the pick kit too, those will fit nice, but then the short end of the pins just barely fit in the breadboard and if it gets bumped just a little bit it falls out that's never really going to work for us. We could do it the other way around we might just barely get a connection with the short pins into the pick kit too well even that's not going to work at all it, it just doesn't work. Furthermore when you get to a substantially more crowded circuit a circuit that really does something meaningful for example here's the uh, USB demo board, the third demo board we'll look at on a breadboard. At this point, if you were going to try and get one of these headers into here to accommodate the pick kit too, it would be awkward because you'd have to start moving your other parts around. There's other wires in the way, there's a capacitor there, and if you wanted to use the bent header to go to the edge of the board, even if you had some spare board room, which here we just barely do, at that point you have to run your programming and clock lines a long ways along the board, at which point they're going to have noise from the other lines and such, and you might not get a clean program. So, really the only good solution is you want to make yourself one of these nice programming connectors. Then it's so quick and easy. You insert one side into the pick kit too, and the other side into your board, and you're good to go. You can lay it down on your desktop, you can hold it upright if you prefer. You can, because we use stranded wire in here, you can kind of position the pick kit too on one side or the other. It gives you all kinds of freedom. You could even lean it the other way if you like. It doesn't really matter. You can put it up top. You can essentially program without a problem and you can put your other parts of the board without having any restrictions to accommodate uh, where you're going to insert your programming connector to. So definitely, these are what we want to make. So today, I'll show you how to do that. And here we have our breadboard programming connector parts list. Uh, for each part, I've listed a part description, additional info, a recommended supplier, and matching supplier's part number. Uh, but for most of these parts, really, you could use uh, an equivalent from a different supplier if you prefer. Uh, so starting at the top here, we have uh, six pin headers. Of course, we'll need uh, two six pin headers for each programming connector that we make. Uh, I recommend buying those in uh, 36 pin strips and then breaking them into six each. And then we're also going to need uh, some wire. Definitely you, you want to get stranded wire. I recommend the colors white, red, black, green, and yellow. And then we're going to need uh, solder. I recommend sticking with 6040 leaded solder. And then we'll need a flux pen for applying uh, flux separately to our parts uh, before we apply the solder. And then we'll also need a 10x loop uh, for inspecting our solders when we're complete. And then we're going to need some heat shrink tubing to cover our solders when complete. So. Um, as far as possible soldering stations, during this video I'm going to use the Weller WES-51 with a .03 inch conical tip. 
Um, although you generally don't want to use a conical tip to hold solder, in this case a 0.03 inch is a that's a relatively blunt conical tip, so that'll still work well for us as holding as far as holding solder on the tip first and then applying it to the part second. Uh, I'm gonna have my iron set to 680 degrees Fahrenheit, but anything in in the general soldering range, probably 650 to 700 Fahrenheit, would probably be okay. Um, and for your reference, if you're interested, the Electronics Express part number for the station and tip are listed here. Uh, if you're on a little bit more of a modest budget, uh, the Weller WLC 100 with, the, again, uh, I suggest a 0.03 inch relatively blunt uh, conical tip uh, will work well for you. Um, that particular unit has a power control knob that ranges from uh, 1 to 5. You want to turn it up definitely towards the higher end of that, uh, perhaps 4.5 would be good. And here's the part number for that station and that tip at Electronics Express. And as I mentioned earlier, we definitely want to stick to good old uh, 6040 leaded solder. So before we get to the bench and start soldering, I should probably mention that uh, this is not intended to be a video on soldering, generally speaking. Rather, I'm, I'm going to focus on making the programming connectors to allow uh, programming of the 18F4550 in a breadboard. Um, but for anybody out there who's new to soldering, and you like some uh, general video information on soldering, if you go to YouTube, and do a search for EEV blog soldering. Uh, among the first results that come up will be EEV blog number 180, 183, and 186. Uh, these three videos are excellent as far as uh, an intro to soldering for somebody that's new to it. Um, specifically, uh, there's an additional video that you should probably check out. If you type in surface mount soldering, One of the first videos that will come up is this video by uh, Curious Inventor, Surface Mount Soldering 101. And um, this is an excellent video on surface mount soldering generally, but uh, it, specifically it introduces the concept of, and I cheated it ahead of time and downloaded another window, it specifically introduces the concept um, at which as you go from through hole to surface mount soldering, which is necessary, of uh, touching the solder to the tip first, depositing some solder on the tip, and then pre-fluxing the metals you're going to join and then bringing the tip with the small blob of solder over to the metals and then applying the solder that way. Um, in the case of surface mount soldering this is often necessary because the parts are so small that you couldn't really use the tip to individually heat the parts first and then apply the solder to the parts. Uh, in our case we're going to need to employ a similar technique for the reason that with these six pin headers if you were to heat the part that we're going to need to join to our wire here thoroughly first and then apply the solder during that time this plastic part that holds the six pins together would melt so we can't do that so what we're going to have to do is either apply solder to our soldering iron tip first and then bring that over to the parts that we're going to join 